Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back or to get over your ex. If you're listening to this, it's probably because you were broken up with or you had to break up with someone because they took you for granted, weren't treating you right, or they cheated. And I know that right now you're feeling lost and hopeless. So I am making this video to give you back some hope because you probably think it's impossible to get your ex back right now. And I have a client of mine who was once in your situation and a lot of the elements of her story are going to be resonating with a lot of you. And I hope that her story will uplift you and give you some hope. So stay tuned. But first, I want to welcome back my beautiful No Contact Army. If you need help to stay in No Contact, then be sure to download my app Silencio. The link is underneath every single video and podcast. And if you too would like to join our No Contact Army, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're in. And to read our manual, go to NoContactSecrets.com where you can read two free chapters before purchasing the book. Okay, so she sent me an initial email. I'm going to read some of it and uh, let you know what happened. Okay, so she said that she was in a long distance relationship for two years and they had an agreement that if either one of them met someone who lived closer to them, they would end things but remain good friends. And I said, yeah, right. I told her, you, she's being naive. That is not going to happen. And most people are not going to stick to that anyway. Okay, there's no way, especially as a woman, and you're bonded to this man because of our frenemy, oxytocin. You're with him for two years or one year or whatever, however long it would have been. And suddenly he meets someone closer and you think he's just going to say, oh, hey, I met someone. And you'd be like, oh, okay, good. All right. Well, I won't see you anymore. I won't be your girlfriend. But yeah, let's be friends and let's chat and catch up once in a while. That is delusional. <laughs> okay. So then she said that... Earlier this year, she got two missed calls and a text message from a number saying, this is so-and-so's girlfriend. What is going on between you? He won't tell me. She said she confronted him and at first he tried to deny it. That it was just a joke. Sure. And then it, he explained that they'd been dating for three months, but it wasn't anything serious. Sure. And he said that he was finding leading separate lives difficult and sometimes lonely. But meanwhile, she said that they were constantly in touch every single day via text and video calls from the moment they woke up to the moment they went to bed. So I don't know how he found time to cheat, but okay. Right? So this, everything he's saying is a lie. I'm lonely. Okay. But you're talking to your girlfriend pretty much 24 seven. So she said she wasn't going to be a side piece. He begged her not to end it. And then he called her a few hours later and he said, okay, I ended it with the other woman. Sure you did. Sure. Okay. So they start seeing each other again. They continue seeing each other. And then he came to visit and he needed to use her laptop. <laughs> and uh, then later on, she realized that uh, he was still logged into her laptop. And she logged into his account in order to log out. And then something about Google Drive automatically updates itself hourly with new photos. And to quote her, I was mortified to find pictures of him and this other woman wearing matching pajamas cuddle up in bed. Ew. <laughs> matching pajamas. Get out of here with that. And they had a date on them. And this was after he had supposedly broken up with the other woman. So she texted him immediately. And of course, he. what did he do? What do you think he did? He lied again. And he said, oh, those are old photos. Yeah, right. So obviously she didn't buy it. And then of course he said he was sorry that he lied. He regretted his decision, blah, blah, blah. He understood if she never wanted to see him again. And he's texting her this and she's ignoring him. Uh, he's, you know, once again, he apologizes. She's ignoring him. So she says to me, I still haven't contacted him. I don't even know if I want him back. My head and my heart are so conflicted, of course. 
I still care deeply and despite my most logical argument to never speak to him again, it kills me to know that this other woman may get him. And I said, what is she getting? A liar and a cheater? It's not like she's getting some prize. If anything, you should feel sorry for her. Never mind it killing you that she's getting him. <laughs> and so um, she goes, it's taken every fiber of my being to not reach out and call him every name under the sun and accuse him of lying in the first place. Well, he already knows he lied, so you're stating the obvious. And, you know, what's that going to do? You're going to feel better for five minutes, and then you're going to go right back to feeling terrible. And when you do that, when you act crazy, all you're doing is that you're showing that you have a very high interest level in them, and they know they have an excellent chance of getting you back. You boost their ego. You're actually giving them peace of mind by acting crazy. They think, wow, I'm so amazing. This person is out of control. Look at them. They can't control themselves. They're freaking out. Look how wonderful I am. Don't ever give anyone the benefit of freaking out on them, especially when they've cheated and lied. You go straight into no contact. And, uh, and then she goes, um, I don't know if he'll ever reach out again. And I said, oh, please. <laughs> he will definitely 100% reach out. Okay, I had absolutely no doubt he would reach out. All right, so that was the last I heard. And then a few months later, what do you know? I hear from her again. And here is her success story. So she goes on to say that four days after that last argument, he texted her and said, I miss you. Hope you know that. Shut up, breadcrumb. <laughs> and then eight days into no contact, he responded to a story on her Instagram and he goes, you look so beautiful. She didn't respond, thank God. 39 days into no contact, she saw it was a text from an unknown number and it said, if you haven't already blocked my number, you're about to get a missed call. I sat reading the message thinking, what on earth? Before I had a chance to even consider that it might be him, my phone started ringing. I ignored it. My phone rang again. I ignored. I ended up with nine missed calls and a voicemail from who? His girlfriend. I eventually listened to the voicemail and she was crying uncontrollably. Exactly. I said, you need to feel sorry for her. I just made out the words. I found him looking at your pictures on his phone. I deleted the voicemail, blocked the number and any future unknown numbers, and then decided to take action and block him across every single social media platform. As far as I was concerned, I was done. I was not about to invite drama into my life. Way to go. Day 57. Hmm, interesting. Day 57. Would that be between days 45 and 60? I think so. I woke up one morning and saw a notification on Instagram from an unknown account that wanted to send me a message. It was him. Of course it was. And he said, I know this seems kind of crazy and maybe I am, but I need to talk to you. I miss you terribly. And no matter how hard I try, I cannot get you off my mind. I've taken some time off work and made a three hour drive to come see you. I'm staying at the hotel down the road. If you could please spare just a half hour to see me, I would be so grateful. I want to explain everything. Please respond. I'm so sorry for all the stress I've caused. All my love, always. Well, that's certainly a significant message. I responded a day later. Good. She's listening to me. She listened to me. Yay. And I said, I'm not interested in a man who's already committed to someone else. He responded almost instantly with a voice note and told me he had broken it off with the other woman because it wasn't over me and she knew it. He then sent me a recording of their breakup conversation over the phone and multiple screenshots of him blocking her on all his social media. So he had receipts. Good. I agreed to meet for coffee the following day. When he saw me, he broke down. He explained that he was looking at my Instagram every single day just to see my face. And once I blocked him, he lost it. This is why I say to block your ex after, well, I say 60 days. She blocked him sooner because of all that drama with the girlfriend. But at some point, if you don't hear from your ex, you ought to block them because this is often the response. They freak because they feel a connection to you as long as they can see your photos, your social media, your Instagram, whatever. And then when you block them, it's like you totally cut them off. You're gone. You're dead. 
He and his girlfriend would argue relentlessly about me because he refused to block me or delete my number. He wanted to message me every single day but didn't know what to say or how he could possibly rectify the situation he had caused. It got so unbearable for him that he decided to create a fake account on Instagram just to message me because he knows I reject unknown callers. <clears throat> so what did I say about the only reason that someone will come back? It's because they feel that they will be happier and they need to be in pain. And this is what happened. As he said, it was so unbearable for him. He had to do something. She continued, he was a changed man. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was so sure of himself previously, but now I had this broken down man sitting in front of me, begging me to take him back. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of no contact. Most people are bluffing. Most people wear a mask. They put on a brave front and you're like, oh my God, I'll never get him back. My ex is so stubborn. My ex is so cocky. Oh, they're not interested. And then you find out the truth. As I often, when I read the comments and the story, you see lately the stories of the ex is coming back and crying and crying and this one broken. I was heartbroken inside and I wanted to desperately hug him and tell him things were okay. But instead, I just said, I need some time and space to process this. Wonderful, great. She did exactly what I say to do. She's playing this perfectly. I love it. I finished my coffee and said goodbye. And he's called me every day since just to check in. This entire time, I thought he was enjoying life to the fullest with this other woman. See, we don't know what's going on. We just think the worst. We just think, oh yes, he's off with someone else or he's off with the girl he cheated with. He doesn't care about me. She doesn't care about me. I'll never hear from them. But no, we don't know what's going on. So he was not enjoying life to the fullest. He was miserable. And uh, she just continues, I thought I was going to be forgotten. It was really difficult, but the no contact app help, helped Silencio. The more time passed, the more confident I became that I could do it. I still love him with all my heart, but I'm not sure if this is the right path for me anymore. So then I just got an update from her today, the day that I'm recording this. And she said that she asked him the six questions, which you absolutely have to ask your ex if they want you to take them back. And I'll put the link in the upper right-hand corner. You don't just take them back. No, 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 no. They got to pay a price also. They got to have great answers to these six questions and there needs to be a price paid. Uh, she said, his answers made me a bit teary, I have to admit. Uh, he asked me if I would allow him to book a vacation to a surprise destination as a gesture uh, to show how sorry he was. And of course, she said yes. Well, good for her. At least she got a vacation out of it. <laughs> and possibly him back if she wants. So there you go. So anybody that would have talked to her before she heard from him would have thought, oh yeah, no, he, he was cheating on you. He chose the other girl. He doesn't want you. Forget it. Move on. You're never getting him back. It's an impossible situation. So it was long distance. There was infidelity and yet she got him back. So I don't know what your situation is. It may also have distance. It may also have infidelity, whatever the elements are. As long as you follow this strategy, you will have an excellent chance of getting your ex back. She did everything I would recommend you to do when you're broken up with or when you're forced to break up with someone and she got him back. So if you're not familiar with my strategy, I suggest you listen to my no contact playlist to understand what to say when you hear from your ex, when to respond, when not to respond. We don't respond to breadcrumbs around here. I know everyone else says to respond to every single message. No, you wait until they say something significant. And if they really care, if a guy really cares, if a girl really cares, they will eventually say something significant. And if they don't, it's because they're not that interested. Okay. So now I want to hear from you. What do you think of this story? Would you have taken them back? What would you have done in this situation? Please comment below. And if you, if you'd like my help to get your ex back, you can contact me at theartoflove.net and we will send you the rates. The direct link is below. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts, and enlightens.